Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the Correct Views. It's Sam I.B. Ganji doing uh, political commentary for the media speaks. Welcome aboard. I had somebody ask why I opened the show the way I do. If the greetings, unsettled souls meant that I thought everyone had tinfoil hats on. I have no idea where they got that from. But it's a phrase that has been with me for quite some time. And in regards to the show, um, what isn't unsettling about what we talk about here? We have, um, we have nukes pointed at us from North Korea. We have global meltdowns. We have crooked people that should be in jail running for president. There are things to be unsettled about. So, I mean, I, I don't make any apologies for the uh, format of the show or what I say at the beginning of it at all. And uh, most of you get it. I mean, I appreciate it greatly. It's listener supported. Uh, you can donate. Yeah, you can see my hair on my screen share at uh, Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-R-N. Type in the correct views. All the money you give to me helps me right now. It's new. I don't have anybody donating anything at all. So you could be the first. Uh, American Mayor Victor Skinner, Jeff Sessions here, speaks more logic in just a few seconds than some people do in entire uh, novels. Create safe zones for refugees in the Middle East. Now, the reason that this is a good idea is twofold. First of all, there are a lot of people going into, or I should say leaving Muslim lands and going into Europe. This is creating a problem for the Muslims. They are having a problem acclimating in some instances they don't wish to assimilate at all and it's creating a cultural problem or it doesn't matter which culture it is that you belong to the point is they don't tend to get along very well they're not extremely compatible um i've had this discussion with my friend giselle about where i would go if i had to leave the u.s um i don't speak spanish i would have to learn the language of which if i had to go to a spanish-speaking country i would at least try to do um and that would be interesting i have very little aptitude for foreign languages but i would try um but in all seriousness probably guatemala i hear that they are quite um anti-socialist which sounds like it would be a good place for me to go um i wouldn't go to venezuela the the bigger issue here is uh, the other side of it. Europe has its own culture. It makes more sense to create a safe space in Muslim lands of the same country of which they are supposedly fleeing from. There is some ambiguity, but for the most part, fleeing Syria. Well, wouldn't it be better to create a safe spot in Syria where they could remain, where there is not the war going on, where there is some order out of the uh, madness that's there, instead of moving them into where it's simply not going to work in Europe? In much the same way that, um, let's pretend for a second that the United States was different countries. Wouldn't it make more sense if Ohio, where I'm at, was getting bobbed and decimated? Wouldn't it make more sense to create a safe zone, say, in Maine or Texas and move me there until it was over and I could try to come back to Ohio if I wanted to? Or move me to Venezuela? where I don't know anything about the culture. I don't speak the language or nothing. And it's probably not going to be a good fit. So I'm not saying attack the Arab here. I'm saying the two cultures simply do not get along very well if, even if they are honest refugees, unless they have always wanted to go to Europe. It's probably not going to work. Just like it wouldn't work if I was to go to, say, Syria. It probably wouldn't be a good fit. Regardless of what's happening in America, it would not be wise for me to go to Syria. In much the same way, regardless of what is going on in Syria, 
It doesn't make a lot of sense to leave it and go to the West. It is not going to be a pleasant experience for you. Again, unless it's something that you've always wanted to do and you know something about. Uh, leave me a comment about what I just said. Does that make sense to anyone that listened to that? Does it make sense to you? Let me know. Comment line. Victor Skinner, American Mirror, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has a plan for dealing with refugees in Syria and Turkey that doesn't involve mass migration to Europe or to the United States. And this is where I wish people would really listen to what it is that Trump wants to do, because the man has common sense and reason and logic on his side. He is not someone we follow due to blind emotion, but we do it because of facts and substance. In a Fox News report highlighting a terrorism travel warning for Europe issued by the State Department this week, Trump National Security Advisor Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama told host Greta Van Susteren a big part of the problem is this massive flow of illegal immigrants into Europe, mostly even from Arab areas where they have too much terrorism. So Greta, he's not saying that they're all evil. He's not saying he hates the Muslim. President Trump, if he's elected, will take strong steps um, to ensure that people who come to our country are properly vetted, Sessions said. Notice he did not say Trump hates the Muslim and wants him dead. He's not saying the Muslim may never come to the country again. Most of the people in Europe now, well over a million, are young males, and in no way have they been vetted. They're coming in, like we have people coming in across the border, with no way, really, to evaluate their background or danger. Van Susteren relayed her experience touring the utterly horrible, overflowing refugee camp in Iraq and questioned how, now that so many are relocating to Europe and America, what can be done to address the situation? Well, listen, friends, the article goes on. What we've got to do, what the United States should do and Europe should do, is make clear that people will not be allowed into the country illegally. And then I think the world does have a duty to kill all Islamists, right? No, the world does have a duty to see what can be done to create better and more refugee areas. Oh my God, that's so racist. That is so hateful. I really believe we can create safe zones in Turkey and in Syria where people can live safely there, close to their homes, so that they can be returned home as soon as possible. It just cannot be the policy of the United States that when there's a war-torn area, everybody is entitled to come here, he said. We can do better. We should have done better already. And the instability in Syria, frankly, is a big part of this. Millions of refugees was poor policy for the Clinton-Obama administration. Both of that is true. Absolutely true. She was the worst Secretary of State ever. So, obviously, it makes more sense to keep them where they are than to move them into areas where they have nothing in common with the people in the land that they are moving to. Okay, I don't, if I, if I get roped into moving to Syria, I don't expect them to suddenly cater to my every wish. That's not gonna happen. I should probably keep my ass out of Syria. Um, it's, it's just a clash of cultures, regardless of which one you're on, they're not compatible. One of them says, if you're not Christian, then you, if you're not Muslim, if you're Christian, if you're Buddhist, then you must be forced into their religion. That is not applicable to the West. You need to find another solution. And that solution was given there brilliantly by Sessions, I would say. A political insanity of the left swamps Democrat campaigns. This is just funny. Violent Black Lives Matter agitator and animal rights activists create chaos for the establishment party. It's Kurt Nemo. This is great. How many of you have seen the 12 Monkeys? Remember the Army of the 12 Monkeys? Um, for those of you that have, has it, have it. The 12 Monkeys were, uh, in this, this story, a, a group of people that wanted to set animals free, and it ends up having much bigger consequences. I don't want to give the movie away because it's one of the great movies of all time as far as uh, modern psychological sci-fi thrillers go. Um, just well-written, well-produced, well-executed movie. Well, anyway... Sanders has actually been disrupted by the real army of the 12 monkeys. It's the funniest thing ever. The political chaos on the left is plaguing Clinton and Sanders' campaign. Um, Hillary Clinton was criticized last week for not responding to trans-focus questionnaires by the Trans United. Who gives a damn? I guess uh, like a good little puppet, Sanders did answer his survey from them as if he owes them some kind of an explanation. 
Meanwhile, in East Oakland, California, five activists from Direct Action Everywhere, which is pretty much the Army of the Twelve Monkeys, they are a radical animal rights organization, rushed the stage during a Bernie Sanders speech. The Secret Service moved to protect Sanders, and an activist was beaten with a baton. His campaign has promoted itself based on the idea of progressivism and rejecting discrimination and inequality, said the idiot Zach Groff, a member of the well, Monkeys. When it comes to the animals in the United States and around the world, discrimination and violence is the name of the game every single day. He claims to be progressive, but you cannot be progressive if you oppose animal rights. Now, I'm not a big Bernie Sanders fan. I think he's a nutcase. But the man is not against animals. He's not against puppy dogs. You are a nutcase. Army of the 12 Monkeys, uh, direct action, my ass. Uh, PJ Dub, Prison Planet, Swedish government kicks a local family out of home and gives it to Muslim migrants. People want to know why Donald Trump is so hateful. I have another question. I want to know why people can't see that there's no hate in this man at all. He is protecting us from the, this kind of insanity, raping the country worse than we already are getting it now. A local family in the Swedish city of, I'm going to butcher this, Lindingro, has been ordered by the government to leave their home so that it can be given to migrants arriving from a foreign country. Father of two teenage boys, Euph Rostin, received a voicemail from his local municipality telling him that he would need to vacate the property by August in order to make way for asylum seekers from the Middle East. In other words, we've accepted people into the country, even though we shouldn't, and now we're going to give them your home. I was evicted from my home over the phone, and when I asked for the reason, he said that people come here from other countries. He left out the news and basically just said, have a nice weekend, Rooston told the newspaper. It goes on that he lives with his teenage sons, uh, Rain was 15 and Linus 17, all of whom were born there. He rents the home from the city and has been living there for less than a year. And it, I feel like I'm worthless, even though I pay taxes and my kids go to school here. You cannot put a family on the streets for another family, said Rooston. Just when it starts to feel like home, we've been evicted. We are evicted. Rustin said that the news was depressing and wondered why native Swedes were being treated worse than migrants arriving from the country for the first time. Despite suffering a housing shortage, in which case Sweden cannot take in migrants, Sweden is handing over property to economic migrants, with some politicians even encouraging citizens to give up their garages to asylum seekers. This is insanity. This is a parasitic takeover of the existing culture. You people that like to speak out about what we did to the Indians, why is it now okay for Syrians to be doing it to everyone all over the world? This doesn't make any sense. I'm all for helping people, but there's a line when it's simply, when there's one too many people in the boat, the boat sinks. It just is, friends. That doesn't mean you close the boat off for everyone, but you do keep track of who is in the damn boat. Um, friends, this is all brought to you by Sticker Junkie. I got three stories to get to. I just want to remind you that when you get your stickers that you're going to love greatly, and Sticker Junkie shown here on screen share, you are going to get an amazing deal. You're going to get amazing stickers, and you're going to get an even better deal because you see these awesome stickers. Well, on checkout, you, you listening to this, are going to type in a correct views or the correct views, and you're going to get a discount, a savings, even further, because you're a listener of the show. And why are you a listener of the show? Because we cover things like this. New American, Alex Newman, UN adopts education plan to indoctrinate children in globalism. In a nutshell, what this is, is they're going to take their agenda, which is not based on fact. Let's pick our global world. And the science is proving that man is not responsible for warming the planet and that the planet has not warmed in at least 15 years. There have been periods long before the Industrial Revolution, long before cars, when the planet has warmed up at a much greater rate 
than anything we've seen. And it's cooled the same way. It's simply the way the planet is. Much of it has to do with the sun. For those of you who are nerds like I am, you know they've been rather active lately. Well, some storms, I mean. Well, they're going, the UN wants to take over the sovereignty of individual countries and force an indoctrination of largely UN lies upon students the world over so that they will grow up believing these lies. This is really close to what they did in Nazi Germany, where they would raise people with the lie of eugenics, the lie of racial uh, division, being part of a genetic heritage. And the child grew up not knowing that it was never true. Well, that's what, that's what the UN is planning to do here. So, I mean, pay attention to this. Hit share, leave comments, let people know. That's why I'm doing these videos. The United Nations Summit in Korea this weekend adopted a global action plan demanding a planetary education regime, regime to transform children around the world into social justice warriors and sustainability-minded global citizens. In other words, they're using a lot of doublespeak to pass an agenda that is not based on fact, but simply going to send us into further downward spirals of things like we're seeing in the EU as we move toward a one world government. Globalists in the UN know that to achieve their vision of total totalitarianism, the minds of the young must be captured via education. Agenda 2030 actually has an entire goal dedicated to UN guided quote education, which it isn't, and it's indoctrination. And so the latest summit in Korea organized by NGOs, we know where that goes, by the D UN Department of Public Information, DPI was aimed at defining what the education regime will look like. Education is a human right, essential to well-being and dignity. They, they, they rope you in that way, but then when you realize what they're teaching, um, it's frightening. The education for global citizen must promote integrated development of the whole person, person emotionally, ethically, intellectually, physically, spiritually, and so socially. Well, we already know the UN is the most uh, anti-Christian, anti-God organization in the world. So we're going to trust them with the spirituality of the world? I don't think so. They call, they call Islam a religion of peace while they're setting people on fire in cages. So you can't trust the UN. Of course, parents, families, communities, tribes, churches, and more have traditionally been responsible for that. But no, 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 no. Parents, you get no say. Families, communities, tribes, churches, no, you get no say. The UN will override you on how you should raise your children. Whether under what authority government-run UN-approved schools became responsible for any of these things is not made clear. The implication, though, should trouble anyone who values liberty, diversity, national sovereignty, and, of course, parents' rights. The education pushed by the UN must be imbued with an understanding of our roles, rights, and responsibilities for the common good in service to the humanity. Okay, that all sounds good. That sounds like something you want to move toward until you understand what that means. It says here, to those who are not well-versed in globalist speak, that all might sound fine and dandy. However, when the UN agenda is examined more closely, the real agenda becomes more clear. Consider, as just one point among many, that the UN means when it speaks of human rights. In Article 29 of the UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the government signatories claim rights can be limited by law under the guise of everything from public order to general welfare. In other words, you have no rights, only privileges. Your rights aren't imbued to you by God. Your rights are not inalienable. They are not God-given, but they are given to you by the United Nations. This is the way they're going to be teaching people. This is the world that's going to be coming if we let this go through. Further down, the Global Action Plan explains that the education agenda intends to shape every aspect of human life and civilization, really. Education on global citizenship is an essential strategy to address global challenges, as well as to promote gender inequality. You see, this is the kind of thing that is going to uh, promote Donald Trump right into the White House. Um, in addition to the partnership signed with Common Core financier Bill Gates, UNESCO has been hard at work in its efforts to standardize and dumb down education all around the world. Uh, for those of you that don't believe me, I'm going to hop on here and show you the screen share fact of it. More and more listeners coming in. Welcome aboard. 
Um, among other schemes, it runs global programs for the education of sustainable development, education of good citizenship, and more. In other words, it's teaching them that the UN is God and that all things come from the UN. Since for now, Americans, Europeans, and people around the world still have many options to protect their children from the global brainwashing campaign pushed by the UN. Home education, private schools, Christian schools, and more. However, the UN wants to take that away. In recent years, under the phony guise of human rights, the UN has started agitating for government control and regulation of private and alternative forms of education. In other words, they are going to force feed the lies to the world and indoctrinate people with total total knowledge that what they're teaching them is fake simply to get them to comply this is what we saw hitler do okay so we need to keep the un far out of our schools that needs to be very clear what's that i hear oh you hear it too the dummies of the day now for those of you that don't know we do the dumps count for the month once a month here it's brought to you by change transportation don't call uber call change transportation we we get we mail out the dumps cap of the month we're going to be doing that uh either wednesday or thursday this time um sometimes there are stories that don't win the dumps cap of the month but are far too stupid to not be mentioned to be hammered in well this is one of them this is from QZ.com. I don't know if they've ever been on the show before, so welcome aboard as our dumpy music plays. This woman, a self-described cyborg, I have a few other words for her, can sense every earthquake in real time. This has to be one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. This is like saying uh, you invented a, uh, I don't know, a, a flower turd. Moon Rebus. You just know. You just know. Moon Rebus might just be the most normal-looking cyborg you'll ever meet. Unlike the contingent of extreme biohackers or grinders, as they are called, the 30-year-old Spanish avant-garde artist superpower, in other words, she has no talent, so she's got to come up with something stupid. Self-imposed aberration is not immediately obvious. Rebus has a tiny magnet near the crook of her elbow, that allows her to feel all tremors and earthquakes anywhere in the earth in real time. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, that doesn't have any logic to it whatsoever, you would be right in every way. Welcome to the thinking, people. Like her longtime artistic partner, Neil Harbison, who has a color-sensing antenna permanently attached to his cranium, he's an equal idiot, Rebus says the external physical change is not the point of being a cyborg. I modified my body to modify my mind. Damn idiot. I'm not saying it should be illegal. I'm saying she's a damn idiot. As you can see in the video, if you're dumb enough to watch it, she translates the tremor she feels into her arm into dance movements. Well, yeah, because nobody can tell whether you're right or not. If you can't really dance, you might as well come up with some stupid, complicated way to make yourself look talented when you have no talent at all. Why would you need the surgically implanted body hack? I want to perceive movement in a deeper way, explains Rebus. You're an idiot. The planet moves constantly shaking and moving every day. I thought it would be amazing to translate the massive and natural movements of the planet in a different way. In other words, I have no talent whatsoever. But if I come up with something pithy and worrying, then you might actually think I'm something other than an utter failure. <gasps> Ain't I so cool? Idiot. Uh, NYC to find businesses that don't use correct gender pronouns. In other words, if you are wise enough to know that a man who cuts his schmeckle off is still, genetically speaking, still a man, you will get a fine because you must call that man a woman because you have no free speech. You're not supposed to know anything about biology if you don't call an apple an orange because the apple feels like an orange, then you're an idiot. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Yes, I said it. NYC to find businesses that don't use correct gender pronouns. 
Businesses in New York City face fines under a new law that makes it a violation of someone's human rights not to use their preferred gender pronoun. In other words, if you don't play into their mental problem, then you are going to be fined. According to the New York City Commission on Human Rights, employees, landlords, and businesses who refer, refuse to refer to transgender people as Z or Hira will be in violation of the New York City human rights law. That is called free speech. Go to hell. Violations include inter, in, intentional or repeated refusal to use an individual's preferred name. That's because you are born a man or a woman. Deal with it. We do not need to cater to their insanity. For that matter, you don't have to, if you feel like, even though I'm straight, if you feel the need to call me a female or call me a woman, I don't have the right to sue you over that. It's time for me to pull up my diaper and realize you can say whatever stupid thing you want. But you cannot make us go along with the stupid things you want us to go along with. That's why you got the dumb of the day. It's time to raise the one finger salute to all that, friends. You're listening to The Correct Views. You can donate to the show at thecorrectviewsofhotmail.com. You can also help me out on uh, Patreon. It's the link on the top of the description in the video. Get a hold of me, friends. Let me know how you like the show and uh, help me grow it. Share it. Subscribe. Help me and uh, I'll stay with you, friends. Over 600 videos and counting. Good night. God bless.